Good morning, everybody. Welcome to another video. It's uh, just first light, about half past six, something like that. And I'm down the River Avon, as you can see behind me, out this morning after some chub. That's the plan. I managed to get out early for once because this river is not in a great state at the moment. It's uh, it's very, very clear. It's very low and it doesn't really fish generally Look when it's like this. So first light, last light into dark is the best time so uh, I've managed to get out at first light for once today and uh, we'll have a go for a few hours see if we can winkle out some chub now the other motivation for getting out today uh, well, certainly wasn't how cold it is absolutely freezing this morning um, mild weather's gone we're back to some cold cold weather again it's uh, it's minus one on my car this morning on the way here so yeah my fingers are feeling it already but uh, even so we're going to do a bit of trotting that's the plan I've got my usual go-to setup here, my Dower Tournament Pro 15 foot rod, 125M close face re reel, and a Drake alloy stem stick float on there. Now, if you want to see in a little bit more detail how I set this up, I'll, uh, I'll link you up there. You can go and have a look and there'll be a link in the description below as well to how I set this up if you want to go into it in a little bit more detail. And bait wise, I'm going to go with my usual approach of mashed bread. I've got a pouch full of mashed bread here. I've got some more bread in the car if we need some more. It's going to be bread on the hook. That's the plan. I'm going to throw this in. It's a very wet mix. I'm going to throw it in and uh, trot the float down with a bit of bread flake underneath it. Hopefully, hopefully we can have some chub out this morning before it gets too light. I've got an overcast morning as well, which is good. I'm not sure how long it's going to stay overcast, so uh, we should probably make a start. Now, this is only the second time I've fished this stretch. This is the stretch where I caught my PB float caught chub, and that's kind of what's prompted me to come back as well, obviously, knowing that there's some big chub around. So uh, you never quite know with this river, especially in these conditions, you never quite know how it's going to fish. <laughs> it can be almost impossible. Or it could be cracking. Who knows? I can't imagine we're going to get loads and loads of bites. But uh, one or two bites off the right fish, I'd be very happy with. I can fish all day if I want, but I don't think there's going to be any point at all. But, you know, if we're catching, then why not? But, yeah, I think it's going to be a case of uh, a bit of a dawn raid. Let's see how we get on. Like I say, hopefully, we can have a couple of bites off some really decent fish. All right, the bottom, I think so. Well, I thought we'd had a bite straight away then, but I think it's the bottom. It's relatively shallow through here. It's only sort of three foot or so deep. We've had a bit of rain in the night as well, so I'm not sure what that would have done to things. You know, often it's a good thing, but sometimes it can uh, absolutely put the mockers on things this time of year if it's washed a load of rubbish into the river. I think we'll have a go at this swim first and then we'll get down to the next swim. Try in there. If we're not doing any good in these two, we can always go for a bit of a wander. As I say, I don't know anything about this stretch really, so I don't really know where we might go if we don't do any good in here. Well, I've got the ledger gear with me as well, so we could always try static bait if this isn't working. I would imagine this is probably our best bet. Because it sees a... Sees a bit of angling pressure this stretch. And the fish, certainly the chub, they're not daft, are they? I don't think a lot of people fish and moving bait like this. I'm 
I'm not going to run through too far though because uh, we're going to fish that next swim in a minute. So we're going to hook something down there. I have to drag it right the way back through here. I think we've flirted with the bottom a little bit but uh, not gone down too much so we'll go a tad deeper. I'd be amazed the amount of times you can just put an inch or so onto the, the depth you're fishing at couple of inches and you'll get a bite the next run through right we'll give that 10 or 15 minutes let's get around next door this next swim give that a go as I say before the light levels get up too much been dropping some bait in both these swims so we'll get round there and uh, do that before it gets a lodge right let's have a go in here i say before it gets any lighter it was just my eyes <laughs> but uh, it does seem to be getting light very quickly Hoping we'd have a few hours of uh, dull weather this morning. And it doesn't look like it. Don't mind, it only takes one bite. Now, bizarrely, even though we're on the inside of a bend here, the deeper water is on the inside, which is it's just very strange. I have no idea why. But it's sort of, it's a bit of a deeper channel in the inside and it's much shallower over there. It's very strange. You'd normally expect to get the deeper water on the outside of a bend where it gets scoured out. But uh, for some reason here, like I say, it's, it's on the inside. Very unusual. A nice looking swim just below this one as well. Next to those reeds over there. Opposite those reeds, you can probably see if I get out of the way. See again, reeds on the outside of a bend. It's very strange. All I can think from my basic geography from school is that perhaps that, you see there's obviously a big hill opposite us, big bank. If the uh, the rock perhaps is a lot harder there, which is why that's big banks there, might be a big sort of uh, deposit of much harder rock, which is why it's not eroding over there. The only thing I could think. gone under. There we go, we're in. Wow. Go up, blimey. He's heading up onto the inside. Oh, he's getting him out of that area quickly, really. Well, we're in. Fantastic. Cool. Feels like it's got some weight to him. Charged for the inside, then changed his mind. Wonderful. Makes it worth getting up, doesn't it? God, it's like going for the inside again. <laughs> Come on. He's no monster, but he's a nice fish. Took one look at me and charged off again. <laughs> Got him. Well, as I say, he's no monster, but he's very welcome. 
Wonderful. I'll give him a second. A bit more baiting. How's about that? That's a cracking start, isn't it? Probably three and a half. Probably a bit high three. Something like that. It's uh, wonderful stuff. Cracking. Well, that's fantastic. It's that first bite. Always like to get. Just gives you that bit of confidence to, to know that firstly they're here and secondly they're, they're feeding. Can sometimes be even harder to get the second bite though. Because <laughs> uh, his mates may have all scooted now. Because he's, uh, he's a bit too big to actually drag straight out of the area that hooked him. But you never know, sometimes they're just in the mood and very little seems to bother him. Just kind of where you'd expect to bite as well, sort of level with that tree over there. I'd imagine they hang under that tree and perhaps come in and out. I've not put him straight back, I've got him in the net down here. I've got a lovely deep landing net. Because if we put him back here, he will certainly go and spook, him, spook all the fish. That's gone under down the bottom there, but I seem to remember the other time I fished here, there's, there's a real reed bed or something in the, in the bottom of there. I'm casting a little bit downstream. It seems a bit shallower in front of me here. If I flip the float out here, it tends to drag under. I'm casting it a little way downstream. All right. Is that a bite? Is that the bottom? I think that might have been a bite. It's a very funny one. The float lifted out of the water, which is often a sign of the bottom. So I lifted out the water and sort of did that and then, then settled again. Oh, we'll let it go through though. There are fish there and that was a missed bite. I don't want to disturb them, so we'll just let it let it run through. What I've been doing is sort of letting it go around this corner a little bit and then bring it back on the inside. Another couple of <laughs> there we go well feeding today certainly I think that previous one was a bite as well oh, hook that one a bit further down I'm going to drag him past all the other fish ah oh, that's annoying I was really trying to drag it or let it run through so I could bring it back <laughs> never mind we've got another one so I can't moan Feels a similar sort of stamp. God blimey. What a scrap. Paul's trying to get under, under my feet. Another advantage of having a decent length of rod. Come on, in you come. <laughs> Cracking. Another nice fish. There we go. As I say, a little bit smaller this one, I think. Certainly, yeah, uh, it's not got the, quite the stature of the last one. <laughs> Wonderful. That's fantastic. And I'm pretty sure, as I say, we had a bite earlier on in that run as well I've got these two in this net I think what I'm going to do because they're decent sized fish if we if we get another one I'm going to go and grab my keep net out of the car 
you can drive drive down this length. So the car's behind me. And I think I think I keep that's in there. I've got to keep that. Not that I use it very much. I just can't even remember the last time I used it. But we'll stick that in if we get another one. Do, do so much roving. I don't tend to carry keep that around with me. As I say, if we, if we have another one, we will. These two are fine in here. I've got this very, very deep landing net. Just for this purpose, really, to be able to keep fish in it. Well, it looks like we got this right with the early morning bites. I say I'm sure I had another bite beforehand what it did the float popped up in the water which tells me the weight of the olivet had been taken off the float which usually happens when it hits the bottom but just the way it happened and the place it happened in I think it was probably a bite because uh, it's not done it any other time going through there but uh, yeah unfortunately I was, I was <laughs> I say unfortunately, we did catch a fish, but unfortunately I was letting it run through, to be honest. I was letting the float run through and run round a bit so I could bring it back on the inside rather than over the top of the fish. And we had that bite. Might perhaps, perhaps be worth resting the swim up. We'll have a few more runs through and then we'll perhaps just rest it and feed it for a few minutes. But I'm a bit loath to miss this, this early morning bite time. Because I know this river, as I say, as soon as that sun comes up, these chub will just all go skulking off under the cover and just disappear. Well, I don't think dragging that one back through the swim's done it any good at all, to be honest. See, that's, I think that's a bite. I'm sure that's a bite. Yeah, there you go. Cool, this is a bigger fish. Whoa, whoa, whoa. God, it's charged off under that tree, look. Come on, come on, dad, 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 dad. Blimey, it's got some weight to it. God, what is this? God, this is a heavy fish. If I'm connected just to a fish, not to a snag, and there's some weight to this. God, he's desperately trying to get in that other side. Oh, we got him out. Blimey, that was hairy. Absolutely charged into that tree. Which tells me that, that they are hanging about under there. Also tells me not particularly big fish. He charged off over there. Feels uh, to have some weight to him there. Oh, he's doing a good impression. Oh, no, no monster. But another cracking fish. <laughs> Certainly can't complain. Oh, he's a decent fish. Certainly. Let's see if we can get him in without losing the other two. Oh, he's, he's a decent fish, yeah. That's the biggest one of the day, definitely. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's the biggest one of the day. <laughs> Certainly. There we are. That's more like what we came for. He's a, he's a good four and a half pound. <laughs> Fantastic. That's absolutely cracking. Wonderful stuff. Well, as promised, I've just put the keep net out, but uh, 
Fishing's had to take a little bit of a back seat for a minute because I've just been watching this sparrow walk. Chased a bird off into there. I don't know if we got some footage. Chased a bird off into there, a sparrow or something small. I don't think he caught it. It was they were zooming about in the, in those trees. And he flew off behind me into the into the wood. Wow. Certainly getting worth getting up this morning. Ah, I've been treated on all the on all sides. Fishing on the nature. Fantastic. <laughs> Got my eyes peeled now. But yes, he flew off over there, and like I said, I don't think he had his breakfast with him, so. God, I wonder if we've put the mockers on this swim now, perhaps. If that chub, as I say, hooked it out there, <laughs> charged straight under that tree. So if they are sitting under there and coming out, which I suspect is what's happening. He's going to spook to all of them. It's lovely as well. There's not a breath of wind this morning. This is a, another reason I came out. It's due to get a bit windy, I think, over the coming days. Right, I'm going to rest this swim. I'm going to do another couple of swims, perhaps half an hour or so. Just this one upstream, which only, I don't know, 15 metres. There's one about 20 metres downstream. We'll do these two and it means we can still keep feeding this swim as well. We'll just try and get the confidence back in these chub, which are... I think we've destroyed, <laughs> unfortunately. And that last fish, I just, as soon as I hooked it, it just charged straight under that tree. I just couldn't do anything about it. Just kited very quickly, straight under there. And my guess is that's where they sit and they come out and move back in, come out, move back in. And I think they're probably all in those tree roots now. So I think the best thing we can do is leave them in peace. As I say, for half an hour. See if we can winkle a chub or two out elsewhere. Nothing doing. Right. That's been a very enjoyable few hours. It's two and a half hours this morning down here. I think that's uh, that's the best of it done. So we'll get these fellas back, I think. And go home and do some work. Let's uh, have a quick look at him as we put him back. Oh, very lively. <laughs> Back you go. There we go. I think that's the biggest one. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Can't. Struggling to pick him up with one hand. <laughs> there you go, fella. <sighs> Lovely fish. Cracking. Well, it's been a wonderful and very enjoyable couple of hours down here, two and a half hours. It's about nine o'clock now, but uh, knowing this river as I do, we're not going to get any more bites now. Um, not with it this clear, not certainly till later on this afternoon. So uh, I think time to make tracks, go home, uh, get some work done. But uh, yeah, thoroughly enjoyed that. Certainly well worth getting up just to see that sparrowhawk <laughs> hunting besides anything else. And we've had three lovely chub into the bargain. So uh, yeah can't complain at all anyway i'm waffling time to go home now i am going to get out again in the next day or two but for now thank you very much for watching really hope you enjoyed that tight lines enjoy your own angling many thanks to the channel patrons for your fantastic support 
I'll see you all again very soon.